Respect from Cal from California, Spanibus 2024. Yeah. Hi, my name is Benjamin Lind, uh, um, owner of Humboldt Seed Company, co-owner. <laughs> I mean, the name game in California is as old as like growing weed is. Like, people would always rename, you know, the weed at the end of the year to sell. So I'm not surprised to come here and see that same thing taking place. Uh, we've definitely we've always prided ourselves on you know we keep something what it is is what it is is what it is and we know what it is because we pride every seed that we that we have um, so like the quality control is like our eyes and our hands and you know to be fair a lot of seed like some seed banks that don't you know necessarily produce all their own seeds may not know what they're buying and it is important to have you know some accountability like you don't need like crisper or you don't need any like crazy technology but it would it's it's nice when you know like if there's a reputable breeder that the seeds you got are from that reputable breeder so like some form of that of that eventually will happen i think here is a really good opportunity because you actually get to go and like hang you know meet the breeder and you know look look people in the face and kind of just catch a vibe and you know smoke a joint and chill um yeah, so I think it's inevitable that people are gonna like always be jump on the hype wagon, but I think you know events like this, Spanibus, I mean that's the way around it. I mean, unfortunately, for better or worse, social media has also helped with that. Like people that do come out and put themselves out there, like in a, in a genuine way, or not, you know, try to just be a normal person as much as you can while you have a camera in your face, you know. Yeah, so. This year, we kind of, I mean, I guess like five years ago or six years ago, we had a pheno hunt and it was, we were looking for it through this old OG population and it was just like, I don't know, we had one greenhouse, there was like 170 old just OG uh, seeds in there, all diploid seeds that as far as we knew. And there was this one plant that stuck out from everything else. And it looked really sharp. It was like it looked like it was gonna cut you when you walked by it. It looked like a dangerous plant. And I named it thistle because thistle is a plant in California that's really sharp when you walk through the woods. And it wound up being an amazing pheno. It was super frosty. It was it yielded really well for an OG and was a little bit tall. It was just taller than everything else too. It was just, and it had all the right characteristics. So I really fell in love with it. We took that plant and we. Uh, brought it to Dark Heart Nursery and they ended, they sold it for years uh, in California's uh, license uh, 215 and um, the license like Prop 64, the new age of cannabis licensing there. And what we found years later, we had no idea, we had this clone for years, this one clone was a triploid, naturally occurring. And that just kind of led us on the path to now seeing like what is a triploid, why are they triploids, why are sometimes they tetraploids? We found our first naturally occurring tetraploid this year randomly. Like I thought that we, we, we tested it eight times before we believed it because it was like once you start looking, just testing lots of things, you start finding some just weird mutations, variations, like uh, triploids are essentially like the the seedless watermelon of cannabis or the seedless grape of cannabis they're um you know most uh, most of the things things like 30 percent of most of the like fruits and vegetables we get at the grocery store are all um are all triploids or octoploids or have been heavily selected for the amount of chromosome pairs that they have um, and because we find it's good in a lot of different plants it's not good in everything and we honestly when we did it for cannabis we didn't know if like it would be just a negative and we would be like oh we'll never do this again and just walk away from it but we grew a few thousand last year in california and it was amazing it was they were taller fatter frostier smellier and they finished earlier it was like and there was just more it was more weed easier and they used less water less nutrients less labor 
and they'd use less. So it was like, you get more for less. Um, for Spanabis 2024, definitely, like, I mean, there's a lot of things, a lot of the pheno hunts, like, like you know, every year we look at 10,000 feet or 10,000 different plants in California. We take clones of all of them. We, you know, and we create new new lines off of them. And what maybe some people are like, what it, the world doesn't realize is that when we pick that pheno, it's like, it's a three to five year process to release it as a seed form. So all the work behind it, it just feels like it's kind of like cathartic, like a little bit of a release. Like, it's just like, okay, it's gone. It's first, it's a little scary. Cause you're like kind of giving, you know, it's, Put it, the proof is in the pudding and you're yeah. like you know you're putting your little baby out into the world and but then it's like a relief because she's out there and she's living um, the biggest things I mean the golden sands the collaboration we do with Lee Scratch Perry Foundation um, where we have you know donating part of uh, every every seed pack sold to like to Lee Scratch Perry's uh, foundation where they're building a sustainable eco village in Jamaica and the grill uh, they have uh, it's for like Rasta youth essentially to come and have a place to be and grow food and grow herb, of course, and build a build an eco community. But uh, so that's going school, super banana sativa. But the big, I guess, the thing I'm most excited about probably is the triploids, just because of the the mutated trichromes that we were finding in the triploids. So like, which was a, I mean, not to, it was a trip for me. Um, Looking like when we started looking everything under microscopes, we found you know normally a trichrome. Let's say for scale, just as an example, a trichrome is this tall. On all the triploids, the trichrome was on average about that tall. There's some variation, but on average was that tall. They the, the resin gland at the top roughly the same size, no real drastic like you know bigger or smaller there. But we would see from like where there would normally be one trichrome, there'd be like this like swirl, like a little tornado of trichromes coming out of the, the plant, um, out of the leaf or the calyx. And we also found trichrome trees for the first time. I've never seen a trichrome tree. It was uh, Eric Nugshots and Candid Kush and I in a warehouse um, taking like, we were, just, we were like shooting like, I think it was 20 or 30 different uh, portraits just in a row, just pumping them out. It was harvest time and it was like, everything was beautiful in California. So, um, and we were looking at the plants under magnification and dude, it would change my life. It, it changed my perspective on cannabis and how the cannabis plant works and what the potential pathways are within the plant. And I mean, it, it anything can make, cause, like, cause cannabis is already so sustainable in its natural form that if we're able to make it more sustainable, that seems like a net benefit. I, don't, I know some people are like, why does the world, that's the last thing the world needs is more weed, just because there's so much weed now. Like weed is everywhere and everybody's growing. But if we can grow more weed easier with less input, yeah, yeah, because less, less water, less fertilizer, less pesticides, less everything. Top breeders I have in mind. I don't. I always. I keep my head down a lot of the time, so I'm. And I'm I don't know honestly. I know of a lot of the breeders from here, and I've met them as like friends, but I've never grown a lot of the strains from from the EU. So to choose, but like top breeders, like I mean, Bravi at Sensi Seeds, like he crushes it. Like as far as just keeping the the heritage old world old school varieties like their collection is legendary as far as the like it's it is uh, something unto itself um and their passion for the plant i mean everybody like i mean james loud was over here earlier like his spot's amazing he's got he's got the heart for it it's like you know it's it's him like that's like you know when you see people and meet people that are like as married or as dedicated to the plant as you are it's like you know, you know heart respects heart or whatever um and it's just a way it's another one of those things yeah. like we found it again in gazerpo recently yeah it just popped up randomly it's like a random leaf mutation that exists in Canada. It's just wild. It's so beautiful. I, I spent
spent a good amount of time in Mongolia. Oh, and we went yeah, up in the, the Altai Mountains yeah, yeah, in Kazakhstan. Yeah. And we actually found cannabis seeds and grapes. Like yeah. ancient like yeah. stuff that was, I think it was like 5,000 years old with, the, with some of the sites we were excavating. <laughs> and I was there with the Smithsonian. And when they were excavating these digs, like, I saw what came out of the one grave, and I was like, oh my god, that's... I think that's ganja seeds because it was a big bowl. Yeah. It was a big bowl that's full. And I was like, that's weird. I was like, oh, it's gotta be beans. I was like, beans or something. And then later on, they were like, oh, we found all these seeds in this grave. We we're gonna call it a seed expert. And I was like, I heard, I just heard him talking. I, did, I wasn't told anything. I was just like, a, you know, I was a digger. I just like went there and dug. I was there, I was there to, so I was just there to like, as, like labor as a you know grad student. And so I heard this that there were seeds that had been pulled out of the grave, and I walked into the tent where we had all the samples laid out. And I walked up, and I was like, "Oh, those are ganja seeds." And they're like, "Oh, we found these seeds too." And I was I didn't know what the other seed was to say. It looked like you know almost like sesame or some tiny little sesame is what I thought. But they called up a, a researcher, and the researcher yeah said it was it was hemp and flax, but it took her. It, it took them like weeks to figure out that it was hemp and they didn't they never put it in any of the writings they never yeah. wrote about it it was just kind of like no we would lose our funding that would yeah. be that would be a bad thing if we included that in our you know report but it was it, it was excavated from um, a dig that was uh, there was a bunch of people buried in a row and um, from forever ago and it started with uh, an infant and the, and it went to a um, an elderly person and it was all the different representations of life wow. in the in their in their culture yeah. and the one was either a shaman or a midwife and that was the one that had the seeds to it and the other there was a different grave that had the flax in it so it was like you know the farmer and the yeah. so that was cool. Thank you very much again, and uh, if you can tell, by Ukta, so yeah. we can sell to our people. How do you say this? Ukta. Privet. Privet. You can say Privet in Russian, so we hello. can tell, or hello, Ukta. Hello, who? Hello, Ukta, from Espanavis 2024. Hello, Ukta? Ukta. Yeah, from Espanavis Ukta. 2024, yes. Ukta, you inhale the vowels, Ukta? <laughs> yeah, because it's Ukta. Russian. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so epic being here at Spanibus with you guys, Ukta. So again, this is some cool techniques, you know, it keeps your life easy, and that's what it's all about for being a, you know, local home grower. Thank you so much. Yeah. Bye, guys. Happy growing. Respect. Mucha, mucha. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.